over the next several weeks, we're going to be exploring the idea of love languages. There are five love languages. The first of which is quality time. People whose love language is quality time feel the most adored when another person actively wants to spend time with them. They particularly love it when there's active listening and eye contact, full presence. This love language is all about giving your undivided attention to that person without the distractions of telephones, phone screens, television. They have a strong desire to actively spend time and have meaningful conversations or share in activities. The next love language is service. If your love language is acts of service, you value when another person goes out of their way to make your life easier. Things like bringing you soup when you're sick, making you coffee in the morning, picking up your dry cleaning when you've had a busy day at work. This love language is for people who believe that actions speak louder than words. Unlike those who prefer to hear how much they're cared for, people on this list like to be shown how they're appreciated. Doing the smaller and bigger chores to make their lives easier and more comfortable is highly cherished by these people. Next is gifts. Gifts is a pretty straightforward love language. You feel loved when people give you visual symbols of love. It's not about the monetary value, but the symbolic thought behind them. People with this style recognize and value the gift-giving process, the careful reflection, the deliberate choosing of the object to represent the relationship, and the emotional benefits from receiving the present. People whose love language is receiving gifts enjoy being gifted something that is meaningful. The key is to give meaningful things that matter to them, reflect their values, not necessarily those of the giver. Next is physical touch. People with physical touch as their love language feel loved when they receive physical signs of affection, kissing, holding hands, cuddling, and intimacy. Physical intimacy and touch can be incredibly affirming and serve as a powerful emotional connector for people with this love language. The roots go back to our childhood, where some people only felt deep affection and love by their caretakers when they were held or kissed or touched. People who communicate their appreciation through this language, when they consent to it, feel appreciated when they're hugged or touched. They value the feeling of warmth and comfort that comes with touch. And lastly, fifth, this week we're focusing on words of affirmation. People who value words of affirmation as a love language value verbal acknowledgments of affection, including frequent I love you's, compliments, words of appreciation, encouragement, even in digital communication like texting or social media. Written and spoken language shows affection, and that matters most to these people. Those expressions make them feel understood and appreciated. And what does the Bible say about words of affirmation? Proverbs 15, verse 1. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but hard words stir up anger. Chapter 15, verse 4. Gentle words bring life and health. A deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. Chapter 16, verse 24. Kind words are like honey sweet to the soul and healthy for the body.
This morning, we have several special announcements. Throughout the month of February, we are receiving a special offering for Canal Winchester Human Services Food Pantry. The Food Pantry, as many of you know, was founded right here at David's Church and later taken over by Human Services and contributes to supporting many people throughout our community with various needs and especially the food pantry. So we invite you to either give through David's UCC or directly to Canal Winchester Human Services in support of this most needed service in our community. Throughout the month, there are opportunities for children and youth to meet together uh, in Christian fellowship and education. Uh, see our schedule for our Sunday classes for your children and youth or contact our minister for children and youth, Brenda Francis. Our Lenten devotionals are now available in the church office for $5 each. They can be picked up Monday through Thursday. Uh, Lent begins this Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, so please pick up your Lenten devotionals uh, as you uh, practice your faith throughout this season of Lent. Our lectionary Bible study continues to meet every Monday at 10 a.m. via Zoom. Anyone is welcome to participate in this interactive study. We meet together each week to discuss the upcoming scripture readings for the week uh, and to study God's Word together. So please join us on Mondays at 10 a.m. Fireside Connections meets on Wednesdays, 5.30 to 7 p.m. This month, we are observing Black History Month and having a variety of conversations related to that. So I invite you to join us for a uh, very uh, inspiring discussion as uh, we grow in fellowship and consider these issues in our world. And we have a new prayer group here at David's United Church of Christ. We are praying for our community and our church and friends and family connected to David's. If you have particular prayer concerns that you would like to share with the church community, please submit those by calling the church office or emailing those and letting us know if you would like those shared publicly. Also, if you'd like either myself or a member of our prayer team to pray with you individually, feel free to contact myself or any member of the prayer team. And finally, our Lenten Bible study will be on Monday evenings at 7 p.m. We will be using the book Dare to Dream by Mike Slaughter, who is the pastor emeritus of Ginghamsburg United Methodist Church here in Ohio. Uh, those books are available in our church office, also $5 a piece. They could be picked up Monday through Thursdays, and our study will start on February 22nd uh, at 7 p.m., so please join us for that via Zoom as well. I wish people would give me more affirmation. More what? More affirmation. To give affirmation is to say yes. You want more people to say yes? Yes. You know, I want people to say yes, you're beautiful. Yes, you're smart. Yes, you're talented. Yes, you're loved. Okay, that sounds good. Like when God said to Jesus, this is my son 
whom I love. Listen to him. Yes, exactly. Affirmation. Did you know when God created people, God said, that's very good. Now that's an affirmation. Do you give affirmation to other people? What do you mean? Do you tell anyone that they're beautiful, smart, talented, or loved? Of course not. Why would I do that? Because everyone needs affirmation. Affirmation shows we care about the other person. Okay. You're beautiful. I am not. You have to say something that you really mean. Something kind. Okay. You're a good listener. You always pay attention when I talk to you. Oh, thanks. You're a good sharer. You always share what's on your mind. Thank you. Now I feel better. Me too. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us affirmation. Help us to give others affirmation with our words. May we look for the good things in those around us and let them know what those good things are. Amen. Amen. The scripture reading today comes from Mark 9, 2 through 10. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. The other scripture today comes from Genesis 1, 26 through 31. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness, and let them have domain over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life. I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Would you pray with me, please? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Trevor Noah, the insightful and hilarious host of The Daily Show, 
was raised in South Africa under apartheid. South Africa has 11 different official languages, languages of the predominant tribes and of its colonizers as well, and a couple dozen other unofficial languages and dialects. Most people in South Africa speak several different languages simply to get by in daily life. And Trevor Noah speaks English, Zosha, the language of his mother's people, some Afrikaans, some Zulu, and some German, the language of his father. Noah tells of being a senior in high school, assuming that he won't be able to get a date for the penultimate school dance similar to our senior proms. A couple months before, Trevor's friend Tom, who is a wheeler and dealer, assures Trevor that he will get him the most beautiful date that he has ever seen. Trevor doesn't believe it, but he agrees to meet this girl. And sure enough, Tom takes him to this girl's apartment, and Babiki is the most beautiful girl he has ever seen. Of course, Tom has an angle. He's trying to get with Babiki's sister, and he hopes that by setting her sister up that he will have an in. For a couple of months, they all hang out together. Finally, the night of the dance comes, but Trevor has car trouble and is an hour late arriving to Babiki's. She is seething, but stunning. She says nothing on the way in the car, and as Trevor can't find his way to the dance, they arrive two hours late. Babiki is steaming angry, but says nothing. Once they arrive, Trevor tries to coax her out of the car, and all she says is no. Trevor's friends see that he's finally arrived, and they are gawking, amazed that his date is so beautiful. The only word Babiki says is no, and she refuses to come into the dance. Finally, one of Trevor's friends tells him she doesn't speak English. She doesn't respond at all when they try to speak to her. Finally, it dawns on Trevor. It's true, she doesn't speak English. In fact, he had never been alone with her to find that out. And looking back on it, his friend Tom had always communicated with her in petty, her tribe's language, and translated for them. Trevor had been so taken by her beauty that he didn't realize they didn't even speak the same languages. After making the realization, he tries to find someone, anyone at the dance who speaks petty, to no avail. At the end, he just takes Babiki home, neither of them having gone into the dance. Trevor Noah quotes Nelson Mandela, who said, if you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his language, that goes to his heart. He was so right. When you make the effort to speak someone else's language, even if it's just basic phrases here and there, you are saying to them, I understand that you have a culture and identity that exists beyond me. I see you as a human being. Language, even more than color, defines who you are to people. And perhaps that's a bit hard for us to understand, not living in a country that has 11 different official languages and you simply have to know several languages to get by daily. But not only did Trevor not speak Babiki's language, her mother tongue, he likely didn't speak her love language as well. Dr. Gary Chapman is a Baptist minister and marriage counselor and the author of many books, including the very popular The Five Love Languages. For the next five weeks, we'll be exploring the spiritual content of those love languages. As a minister and marriage counselor, over the years, Chapman theorized that each person is most fluent in a particular language of love a particular way of experiencing and expressing love. He also determined that many of the problems in our relationships 
with spouses and significant others, parents and children, is that we are not speaking each other's love language, just like Trevor Noah was not speaking Babiki's language. Like the old adage that says opposites attract, usually our significant others do not speak the same love language that we do. Chapman says that those love languages are words of affirmation, acts of service, quality time, receiving gifts, and physical touch. There are many dialects to those languages, but just five love languages. Now, many people might jest that wine, pedicures, or vacuuming by their spouse is their love language. But those are just dialects of the big five. Chapman writes that each person has a primary love language, which means that one of the five love languages speaks more deeply than the other four on an emotional level. When someone speaks my primary love language, I am drawn to that person because he or she is meeting my basic need to feel loved. When a person does not speak my primary language, I will wonder whether he or she really loves me because emotionally I do not connect as strongly with that person. By way of example, on live television, Oprah interviewed the author. And she took her love language quiz live to find out her love language. When questions asked if she would feel loved by her partner doing things for her, she balked. Clearly, acts of service was not her love language. But she quickly responded well to questions that asked if she felt loved by compliments or other verbal acknowledgement from her partner. It was clear that Oprah's love language is words of affirmation. Even one of the most famous, wealthiest women in the world needs to feel loved by simple words of acknowledgement and encouragement. That is the love language we are exploring this morning. If this is your love language, you probably feel loved and cared for when your partner, friends, parents, or children tell you what they appreciate about you, that they love you, and why they love you. Hearing verbal acknowledgement of a job well done or even just appreciation for taking out the trash or taking the kids to soccer practice likely makes you feel loved. When those we love speak our love language, it deepens our bond with them. And as I said, often our partners don't share the same primary love language. So we have to learn to use the love language of those we love. Words of affirmation happens to be my primary language. One of my closest friends, his name is John Seitz, is very reserved, and it's taken John many years of our 15-year friendship to open up. But whenever I receive a letter or card from John, it's always signed, your friend. And I'm always touched by that very simple acknowledgement of our friendship. Our words of affirmation don't have to be flowery or over the top. Even the simplest acknowledgement or affirmation can be an act of love. Mark Twain, it seems, was also a words of affirmation guy. He said that I can live for two months on a good compliment. He also joked that there is nothing you can say in answer to a compliment. I've been complimented myself a great many times and they always embarrass me. I always feel that they have not said enough. And when we look to Scripture, we find that King David's love language may well have been words of affirmation too. The author of many of the Psalms, he expressed his love to God beautifully. In Psalm 19, David said, Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all day long. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. 
Consider how I love your precepts. Preserve my life according to your steadfast love. The sum of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous ordinances endures forever. Princes persecute me without cause, but my heart stands in awe of your words. I rejoice at your word like one who finds great spoil." Like David, we can express our love to God with words of affirmation. Indeed, we have the treasure trove of the Psalms to express our loving using the same ancient words that David did. Or perhaps you express your love of God to God in extemporaneous prayer, or perhaps it's through reading Scripture or other spiritual writings that you express your love of our Creator. Or maybe it is in the words of praise songs or hymns that you celebrate your love of God. If words of affirmation are your love language, God receives these acts of love and desires them to be in relationship with each one of us. God speaks each of our love languages as you will hear over the next few weeks. Not only can we show love to God in our own language, but God uses each of our love languages to show us love as well. Gary Chapman writes that the the God of the Bible is characterized as the God who speaks. God's words are designed to build a relationship with people. The Scriptures consistently declare God's words of encouragement. In fact, God's words of encouragement, of affirmation to us, starts at the very beginning. In Genesis, in the first creation story, after God has created new things each day, God calls God's creation good. When God finally creates humanity, we hear on this sixth day, God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air, over cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. God created humankind in God's image. In the image of God, He created them male and female. He created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. And it was so. God saw everything that God had made, and indeed, it was very good. God affirms, first, that we are made in God's own image. And then God entrusts us with the care of all the rest of creation. God then blesses us. And finally, when God is done creating, God calls us very good. With these words of affirmation, God blesses us and announces that we are inherently good from the very beginning. This is God's affirmation of us. We hear throughout Scripture God's words of affirmation for us. Through Isaiah, God says, I have chosen you and do not cast you off. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Through Jeremiah, God tells us, For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for harm to give you a future with hope. God's words of affirmation to us are most fully expressed in Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Word of God made flesh. Jesus is God's incarnate word of affirmation to us. Through Jesus, God expresses love for us, seeking us out, caring enough for us to take the form of a vulnerable baby who becomes a man who goes even to the cross for us. As we heard just a few weeks ago, at the baptism of Jesus, God says, You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. 
Before Jesus has started His ministry, God is well pleased with Him. Before we do anything, God calls us beloved and affirms us. God calls us very good from the very beginning. Today is Transfiguration Sunday. We remember that moment when Jesus took His chief disciples, Peter, James, and John, up to the mountaintop with Him. It was there that they received their ultimate mountaintop experience as Jesus was transformed before their very eyes. Moses and Elijah suddenly appeared and spoke with Jesus. Echoing the words at Jesus' baptism, God again speaks, saying, This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to Him. Once again, God affirms Jesus as God's beloved, but God also affirms us and urges us to hear Jesus' words of affirming, teaching, of repentance, and the words that will lead us to new life. It is the ultimate in words of affirmation. The only greater words of affirmation are, He is risen. For in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, God affirms a new life for each one of us in God's greatest act of love. So this week, I urge each one of us to learn each other's love language, to speak love how others want to receive love. And may you receive love in the ways God has wired you for love. Hear that you are very good, beloved, and recipient of new life in Christ. Know that God speaks your love language even when, especially when others may not, receive that love and share it, for it will heal the world. To God be the glory. Amen.
come now to our time of prayer to lift up in this community and to God all those joys and concerns on our hearts and minds. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the gospel proclaimed in word and deed, for communities of faith far and near, and for all who show the face of Christ throughout the world, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For creation, sun, moon, and stars, life forming in the dark earth and ocean deep, mountains, clouds, and storms, and creatures seen and unseen, and for the Holy Spirit's guidance in our stewardship of God's creation, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those responsible for safety and protection for emergency responders and security guards, attorneys and advocates, civil servants and leaders of governments, that they witness to mercy and justice throughout the world, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all who suffer this day, that Christ, our healer, transform sickness into health, loneliness into companionship, bereavement into consolation, and suffering into peace, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For companions on life's journey in this worshiping community, for loved ones who cannot be with us this day, and for guidance during struggles we face, that God's glory is revealed around and among us, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their earthly pilgrimage, that their lives of service and prayer inspire us in our living, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, in whose name we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We thank you for joining us for worship this morning. We pray that this service has been a blessing to you. We encourage you to continue to support David's United Church of Christ with your financial support. You can give to us directly through our website or through our Tithely app securely online or by scheduling bank bill pay through your financial institution or simply mailing in your check to the church office. Any way you choose to give to David's, we greatly appreciate your generosity and faithful stewardship as we minister in Christ's name in this community and beyond. Receive now, friends, this benediction. Gracious God, be with us when we speak to others. Let our words bring health, joy, and delight. Give us opportunities today to share a kind word, a scripture, or a compliment so that it can sow a seed of kindness in someone else's heart. In the name of God, our Creator, and Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Advocate. Amen.